Hello, welcome to the queue. We are back at the Global War Table, and it is July 1939, and war has come to Europe. That's right, uh, it's the Commonwealth turn, but uh, you can see Germany has invaded Belgium, Yugoslavia, and sort of Poland. They had a little bit of a setback there in uh, one of those Polish territories. So what that does is, because it's three territories, so each ter or each country, uh, Britain gets two dice to roll for their income increase. It is also uh, the beginning of the dice rolls for income increase, so they get that dice there. Now the French, for some reason, they don't seem to care too much, uh, so they only get two dice um, for all three countries. So um, for some reason, that doesn't bother them. Uh, and then their uh, income increase normal roll is a d6, so they'll get those three dice. So um, I know on uh, the German turn at the end, they just said, well, they're both at wartime income. Well. Britain, yes, they only need, they're at 15, they need 19, so there's enough there. So, just for grins, we rolled the dice, so no one can say we didn't. Uh, so they are, they go up to 19, and that is, because of the Canada at war, um, that is their new wartime income. I think it was 25 is what I think it was. So anyway, France's wartime income is um, 18, and they are at 10. So out of these three dice, we need eight points. And there's a three, an 11, and a 12. So France is also at wartime income. So let's move them up to 18. Now, Germany probably did that so that they could collect some more money uh, from France um, when they take Paris, which I'm assuming is this next turn. So let me get this. Oh, you know what? I might need this later to roll. Let's set those dice over there. All right. So here is our purchases. And uh, then we'll get to the technical part of the turn. So... United Kingdom, $15. They're going to upgrade uh, and militia. They are getting the Somali Cavalry, and they are an interesting unit in that uh, they're a normal cavalry until they're attacked. And then after the first round of combat, they become a mechanized infantry, so they defend at a four instead of a two. Um, but if I use the cavalry in an offensive way, they, they don't. They don't morph into that mechanized infantry. So I guess being attacked just really uh, angers them and they get more defensive. Um, we got two more militia that we're buying. Uh, one infantry and one marine, and that's all $15. Uh, Canada has eight. They're going to spend four on the Devil's Brigade. And they can do that now, and I'll tell you why here in a second. And they're going to save $4.00. Um, FEC has $8, so they're going to buy a, uh, another Gurkha and an artillery. And then Sydney, uh, for Anzac has, uh, what do they got there? $8. They're spending three, five, seven, and saving one. So this is upgrading a militia. This is a militia and another infantry in Sydney. And for... The France on their purchase. I was debating between the three militia and the two infantry, so I, th I think I've gone with that uh, three militia buy there. Uh, the other four dollars, because they have ten, is a port, and we will upgrade here this minor port to a major in Cameroon, just in case that's winds up being the only uh, free France. Uh, port we have because the way Italy's lined up you never know all right so there is the buys we can buy the devil's brigade because 
we are declaring war on Germany, and that is Britain and France. Now, that is going to take a plus five income increase away from the U.S., which would happen next turn when Germany declares war on France. Uh, so they're going to be out five bucks for four to five or six, about four, five or six turns, depending on how they roll uh, and depending on what Japan does too. So that, that's a possible 20 to 30 IPPs from the U.S. Now, doing the math here, what we're going to gain, uh, not counting the French and United Kingdom increases, but the other Commonwealth increases, the national objectives, and the territories gained from uh, Belgium, uh, Poland, and the Netherlands, uh, as well as Germany, because we get to march into Germany by declaring war. Uh, that comes up to 32 IPPs. So we're going to be even in one turn on what the U.S. would lose. And then if you want to count all the units that we get to move out of harm's way, and you'll see that as the turn unfolds, um, that's another 42 IPP worth of units. Uh, so, and then plus we're going to go after two German naval units. So hopefully we can sink those and that's even more of a bonus. So mathematically, it seems like the right thing to do. Um, now, if it comes down, you know, and, and U.S. is just five short of going to war on a turn, uh, you know, later on, that that's my bad. But uh, I think I think the reward here is greater than the risk. And uh, besides Germany's, you know, they're baiting us to do that. So uh, I think it'll be worth it. So when we go to war, we get to claim all these ships and change out uh, some territory markers. So first, we've got the Yugoslavia torpedo boat destroyer. And I'm out of the brown one, so I'm just going to put a marker under it. Uh, we've got the Dutch one up here in C-Zone 11, so we'll put that there. Um, here we've got the coastal defense ship and a destroyer, and I will set those there. And that's in C-Zone 24, so take those off the board. And then I got the Dutch sub that is all the way over here being threatened by the Japanese fleet, so... Let's get those off, get rid of that unit, and we'll move that in non-com. Um, so we've got this militia. There is a militia here in Belgium, so we'll put that there as I knock over the Italians. Get that ship out of the way. So there is uh, one for Belgium that goes British. So let's move them up to 20. And we'll go along and do this. Uh, here is Dutch Suriname. That is one. And the Netherlands is two. So that'll be a total of three. So we're going to go up three. One, two, three to 23. And let's keep going. We're going to have from Poland one two and even though these others are nothing i'm still going to mark them um so that will be two for poland so that means they're going to go up to 25 and that is where we'll stop on the free increases we'll have to do combat to get those two in germany so that means all the polish troops will be uh, British for the time being until they're wiped out. Same with the Dutch. So let's go to the combat moves. Slide this out of the... Oh, you know what? Before I get there, I should do the tech. My bad. I was so focused on the uh, going to war thing. Forgot about tech. All right, so we're going back to... Wartime economy, radar, and long-range aircraft for the United Kingdom or the Commonwealth. Well, oh, seven on the blue, so that is wartime income. Well, that's good. I like that one. I like that one. All right, so 
We are up to stage three. That's that's important. That is important. All right. So for grins, uh, this will be the last French roll. Seven. Hooray. So they are up on wartime economy to three, if, as if that mattered. So that's where they are. Now we can get rid of this dice tray. And let's look at some combat moves. I'm going to slide this tray out of the way. And let's do some combat. All right, so going on escort duty is combat moves. So we've got a destroyer from Sea Zone 79 of the naval base. One, two, three, four into Sea Zone 83. And it will go on escort duty with this heavy cruiser. Uh, we also have down here in C Zone 116. Um, do we want to move them or we want to leave them? I think we want to leave them there. I don't have an escort marker. Doggone it. There it is. An extra one. All right, we'll put them on convoy or escort duty down here in C Zone 116. All right, working our way up, we've got C-Zone 79, and we will have a destroyer and a heavy cruiser on escort duty in that C-Zone. And let's keep marking our way up the map here. So in C-Zone 48, we will have a destroyer on escort duty. And let's go up here. So I think the French are gonna do this one. So we're gonna bring a destroyer down from C-Zone 24 and put him on escort duty in C-Zone 32. And then in C-Zone 24, we will put that destroyer and a heavy cruiser on escort duty there. All right. Put that on the card. Getting lots of my hand action there. Sorry about that. All right, so that is the escort duty for the British. Let's do the two. Uh, well, actually, it's just one attack. They baited us into attacking to make sure that we attack and declare war. So let's let's not disappoint them. All right, so we're gonna go on combat air patrol here in C zone ten with a medium bomber and a fighter. And for grins, or do we need to grin? Yeah, let's grin. Let's put this destroyer up here as well. So that means I probably shouldn't put that destroyer up there though, right? Because if I sink it with those planes, it gets to retaliate. Ooh. That's a good call. Let's let's just count on our planes doing it. All right, so for the fighter is a six, and that will be the yellow dice, and the red dice will be the bomber at a seven. And, oh my gosh, what a disaster. What if I'd have brought that sub or destroyer in there? Ha <laughs> figures, what a chump. All right, well... That sub survives. That is not what I had in mind. All right, so the sub in, in C-Zone 10 lives. That is a kick in the groin. All right, that is it for the British combats. Oh, no, it is not. We had them marked up here. So we had a cavalry uh, going into 1, 2, into East Prussia. And I don't know what happens to an empty fortification if that's destroyed or not you guys can decide that and one guy steps in uh, so that is four five away from germany that they will get right back so that puts britain up to 30 and germany down to 25 only briefly only briefly all right that is it for my markings on uh combat all right so let's move some stuff around we are not going to leave those planes on combat patrol so we can move one. So we're going to go with the fighter into C-Zone 24, and it will land on this light carrier. 
we have this medium bomber going back to the British Midlands. In uh, the British Midlands, we're gonna move two infantry into London, but we're gonna take out of London the strategic bomber and, huh, I didn't mark that battle. Well, I don't get to roll that one because I didn't mark it. Uh, I was gonna do a carpet bombing, but blew it, blew it, blew it, blew it. All right. So those, uh, the paratrooper and the strategic bomber going into the Midlands, the two infantry going into London. All right, whoops, knocking things over. All right, so we have a transport here in C-Zone 24, and it will come over here into the channel for one. Uh, that's as far as it needs to go. We're gonna pick up two of the Dutch and bring them back to C-Zone 24 and offload them in the Midlands. All right, so one guy remains there to face the Fury. All right, in the Northland, we're gonna move one infantry up to Scotland. And we've got a torpedo boat destroyer off of C-Zone 24 into the English Channel, which is season 25. All right, so that is, let me set that down. Can't find where my marker tray is, it's far away. We'll just pile them there. All right, so we've got a strategic naval movement of one of these transports, uh, one, two, three, and four. So it will go into C-Zone 24 on that, that card there, that task force marker. And I am bringing up a battleship this time. One, two, three. Oh, you know what? I am not because I can't go through that C-Zone with that German battleship there. I can, however take up the battle cruiser because it can move uh, three with the naval base four so it can go around that into C zone uh, 24. All right so that will that's how that looks. All right so these ships will remain and I'll probably just put them on that task force marker here one later. All right, so over here for the British moves, we've got the other strategic naval movement is this transport going across the bottom. One, two, three, and four into sea zone 144. We have a destroyer at a naval base in sea zone 83, which will come one, two, three, four, and that is that. We're going to get our coastal sub out of Dodge. There's a naval base. We'll come down one, two to C zone 121. All right, looking around. That is on con or escort duty. Staying put. Uh, I think we're going to move this sub. Uh, or are we? Uh, we'll leave that sub there. So we've got our Yugoslavian torpedo boat um, from 151 can move to one, two into C zone 80. All right, so that is what we got. Stand at attention, please. All right, so down here, the Queen's rifle, or is it Queen's rifle? I think it's Queen's rifle. They will move from Southern Australia to Western and we will rail this artillery from Sydney to Western. And I think one final movement. Um, the Patricias are going into Burma. Now, I was gonna move that Gurkha in there with them, but as you can see, Japan has stacked it pretty heavily, so the Patricias will hang out there by themselves. And that is one of the territories they need to be in for connect Canada to connect collect uh, its NO for having units in the Pacific. All right, I think this was the last British naval movement. 
this Dutch sub from 126 will come down one, two to that naval base. Yeah, because three, there's no naval base. So doesn't need to be there. Or can I go to the, you know what? I will go here to C zone 147, one, two, three, because there is a naval base. So I can move that extra amount if I need to. All right, so I am looking at the map on what I have here for any more markers other than the French ones that are out there. And I think that is it. Oh, you know what? I did want to, since these guys can blitz anyway, um, although if I leave them here, they kind of have to fight that and then go in. So I got a good chance of taking out one of those, maybe. Um, if I just fall back into Warsaw, he'll just soak up some infantry on that. Knock over a Russian. Um, so we'll move from East Poland, one infantry into Warsaw. And I think we'll take our chances here again, make him attack that territory again. Um, it's not worth a point. So I don't know if they'll... They may not attack it. They may use these guys to go up here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, that is how we're going to finish up the British movements. And um, I can get rid of this Dutch uh, recruitment role because they are now part of the British Empire. So we spent all our money there. Technically, we only spent half of that, but I'm going to take it off. Spent all our money there and all our money there. So Canada will have those four that they saved, and then Anzac has one they saved. All right, so let's place our units. So we're going to upgrade this militia here in British Somaliland. Because that is where our Somaliland cavalry goes. All right, so they are hanging out in the desert. So I got two militia. One, and I'll just put that chip here in Gibraltar. So that makes a total of, what, four militia in Gibraltar. And infantry and a marine. And then the other one will go here in Egypt. Uh, that'll make three militia there. Okay, right, get these guys off the board. All right, so in northern England is going this infantry up there. And the Marine is going into London. So Canada, the devil's... Uh, Brigade has to be built here in Canada, but if it gets destroyed, I can build it at any of the other Commonwealth factories, so that's kind of nice. All right, so we'll get that dice. So oh, I messed, messed that up. All right, so we got a Gurkha and a artillery. The artillery has to go in Calcutta, so we'll put that in there, and the other Gurkha we'll put into Bengal because... The impending doom that looks like it's building on the horizon. All right. So now for Anzac, this is a militia upgrade and a militia. And they are going to go right here. Militia, and we're going to upgrade that militia to an infantry on New Zealand. So I could have just left that militia there, I guess. And then Sydney is the other infantry. I should have just grabbed them all and came over at once. All right, so we got another infantry there in Sydney. Um, that is it for the Commonwealth. So what that means, now the incomes go up for Canada, FEC, and Anzac because of they are with Britain on declaring war, and I wrote it down here somewhere. All right, so FEC, let me put that over here so I can see it. FEC now goes 
up to 14. Canada goes up to 6, and Anzac goes up to 7. And I think, yep, that is it. So let's look at some national objectives. So Canada has, and I don't have them on this sheet here, but I'm just going to put the roundels for the three that they pick up. So they have one for the unit in Asia, and then they have two uh, because there are no enemy uh, combatant submarines on the east and west convoy line. Um, they have one on the Soviet, the Germans, and then down here on this African line. So they are not in position to block that Canadian uh, national objective this turn. Let me grab the other objectives that we do have. We have three here for the Suez Canal. Uh, Far East, oh, how about I put it up there? Far East Command uh, has two for having Cairo and Aden. And there are no enemy sh surface ships within two of Australia. So that will add to our income as well because we declared war. All right, so let's put out the income. So that gives, and I didn't bring enough big chips here. We'll have an even 30 for uh, Britain. Uh, for Canada, we are going to get six plus three. Um, I got to do the NOs there, which is, no, let me just go back. The national objective for having the Suez Canal is three. So that will be 33 for United Kingdom. So for Canada, we're going to add the six for wartime. And then they have three for those national objectives I just discussed. So that will be nine. And then they sat on four, so they have 13 for next turn, and that'll be Canada's money. Uh, FEC, they are at 14 plus two, so they'll be at 16. So I will use that and that, so they'll be at 16 next turn. Anzac gets $7. Let me grab another... use a 10 because they're going to get seven dollars for the income two for the national objective and then he saved one so that is ten dollars all right so that is what that's going to look like let's go on to france and they are going to do some combat that's right the french navy is in action so we've got two subs from C zone 80. Uh, they will go one, two, three. And we're gonna try and take out that battleship. Hopefully, we are more successful than the British were on that sub. That was pathetic. Um, so we've got a medium bomber going one, two. It'll have three movement left. And we have two fighters joining uh, from Paris at an air base. Uh, one, two, three, they'll have two left. All right, so what that's going to look like is uh, we've got two dice at three. Uh, we'll just roll those separate because um, if they, uh, they are a first strike and that was a waste. All right, so we got two at six for the fighters. Holy cow, are we going to miss? Uh, we've got one at seven. There we go. All right, so we didn't get a first strike, so the German battleship gets to fire back and is damaged, so it is a six, and it gets one. So we're going to lose a French sub, and that is the extent of their combat, I suppose. Uh, for Grins, um We've got this sunk, and escort duty is that one coming down. Uh, destroyer from sea zone 25, one, two. And that's just to fill the gap. Uh, we're gonna land this plane here. Um, it'll go, I guess I'll bring, bring the camera here. Uh, one, two, three, land up here in Scotland. 
the two fighters uh, will they have movement of two left, one two into the British Midlands. So there's a naval base or an air base there, so that'll be good for them. All right, so that combat worked. That combat failed. Grab those. Oop. As I mess everything up. <clears throat> All right, so the, I thought about attacking this sub here, um, but I would have had to have left that bomber there. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get it later. Uh, but now that I didn't get that sub on top, I'm regretting it. <clears throat> so when I move these units out of France, uh, they uh, are not eliminated. So when you look at the rules, the, the, the units that are automatically eliminated are in the French home country, uh, and then you roll for the others. Uh, but the ones that are out of country, uh, they get to stay free French. So let's bring this transport up. One, two, grab him, three, and land him in Gibraltar. Uh, this destroyer is going to come up from C zone, what's the number? 79 to 80. All right, so we got. Uh, this transport here and see in C zone 83 is going to grab this Colonial unit and it is the Cochin division It will pick them up go one C zone and drop them into uh, Eastern Egypt Now we're going to bring these two French subs up uh, one two and I think we're gonna leave them there and we're gonna take one battleship from 81 over into 80. So that's what we're gonna do. I think that is it for the out of state movements. Now for our defense of the French homeland. And quite frankly, it doesn't really matter where I go. Whatever I defend, they will probably go to the opposite. So we know for sure they have to hit Picardy, so we will move one artillery and we're going to take an infantry off that stack for crying out loud. I'll just get rid of that chip and we'll put an infantry there. All right. So the question is do I leave five infantry? I think I do. And. Then we're going to, do we move one out of Paris? I think we do. I think we move one out of Paris. So that will mean there are three or two infantry in Picardy. Now I guess I'll have to go over this when we're done because Germany will be attacking. And let's move that out. All right, so I believe we're good. Oh, that militia is not in Switzerland, just so you know. All right, that is how that looks. All right, so let's place, um, slide this board over. The fat, or the not the factory, but the port is upgraded here in Cameroon to a major. And then I've got three uh, militia here. We're going to put one into Aslas Lorraine. I can never remember how to say that. Uh, one in Picardy and one in Paris. And that is your defense of France. Looking up close, uh, we've got in Picardy, two infantry, one artillery, one militia. In Normandy, one militia. In Aquitaine, one militia, one mechanized infantry. Uh, in Aslas Lorraine, we've got four, basically five infantry, because uh, that colonial uh, infantry uh, defends in a normal infantry, uh, and two militia. So that is the uh, defense of France which got a whole lot weaker since I moved some stuff out, but whoop, better to save it, I suppose. And the French money will be 10. 
and they are up to 18. But wait, there's more. By declaring war, we also are going to give Germany three extra dollars, which is more than compensatory for all the units we just pulled out of Paris uh, or out of France. Um, yeah, they have both those. So that's three, three more dollars. So that will be a total of twenty-one dollars, and I am sure that is what Germany had in mind by just attacking uh, a couple countries there in, uh, in Europe and not going after France directly. Um, so they got their wish. And uh, that is it for, what turn is it here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was it for UK, Commonwealth, and France, turn seven. Up next will be Category Cow with Italy, and uh, will they declare war on France since that's uh, wide open for them, along with a couple other French territories. But that gives the U.S. their plus five back, so that would be nice, uh, even trade. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next round.